One of the most common questions I get asked is, you know, how do I start day trading? So what me and my mentor Bao did for our viewers on YouTube is create a free mentorship course that reveals our 12 secrets that every single brand new day trader should know before they get started. But please take note that there is limited seating every single week. So please reserve your spot at myinvestingclub.co. The link is in the description. All right, enjoy the video, guys. What's up, guys? It's Harry Haas here. And today I'm just going to be kind of doing a video on daily process reminder, plus some trade recaps and some hot recent patterns. So without further ado, I'll just get right into it. Um, so this morning, so this morning we had uh, CBLI. Um, that was kind of the main one going into the open. And my plan on it was kind of changing closer to the open. And the reason why is because with longing, it's so hard to make a watch list uh, 30 minutes before or even 20 minutes before, or sometimes even 10 minutes before, because the stock is just moving around so much, it's so volatile, sometimes it's up 20 cents, then down 20 cents, and as that stock moves, as the opening price, or as the, as the price changes going into the open, and as that opening price is subject to change as well, so is kind of my plan and the lines that I'm going to use. Whereas if you're a short seller, and your plan is to, to buy a 330 pop on a low hanging fruit that isn't really moving, then what you're gonna be kind of looking for is in the morning, that kind of 330 pops your level and, and, a fade, and a fade down. But you're not gonna have the same volatile pre-market, or at least I hope not, that you would be getting on something like CBLI. So that's why it's kind of harder to make uh, a, a, a long plan in the morning compared to a short plan. And I also think with the with the long lines, they're subject to change as well. And the short lines are more so set in stone. And what I mean by that is that if you're a short seller and you want to short the 350 outer line and your stock finally gets to 350, well, if it's a true outer line on, let's say, a broken stock or a stock that is kind of half broken, then yeah, it probably will stuff up there at those outer lines because that's that's going to be the place where longs are going to want to take profit. And it's probably, by the time it gets there, going to be super overextended. So that's why those lines are kind of a little bit different than the long lines. Because as we saw from CBLI this morning, CBLI ended up doing a you know 50 cent move higher and then got stuffed and ended up from that high dropping a dollar. And after that kind of action, that's not something that I really want to see. So I think for, for us longers, that type of action for us can be subject to change for our plan. But as a short seller, your, your plan is more so set in stone and not as subject to change as, as, as maybe my plan. And it's not saying that our plans are, are any better or any worse. It's just kind of how it goes and how I've tried to do it over the, over the years, really. And... I guess the reason reason being is that 30 minutes before, I would say, well, I want to long the 220 line. This is a great support line. I really want to long it. Well, well, then, you know, 10 minutes closer to the open, we've moved a dollar higher. So if it got to that line, then it, all the longs would be underwater. Everything would be trapped. And by the time it finally got there, it just wouldn't work anymore. So that's why you just can't really plan too, too ahead with these with this stuff like this. Whereas a lot of the, the short shorting broken stocks, um, usually you're not getting the same volatility as you are on the hot check. So that's just something I wanted to point out as well. So the plan was to do the CBLI bounce. Obviously that didn't work, ended up stuffing. You know, it was no trade according to my plan. I ended up taking the Acor trade, uh, the CBLI set up later in the day for a dip and rip, and then I took that kind of dip and rip trade, and a lot of a lot of other members ended up getting that one as well, so I was super happy to see that. I was getting tagged in all these posts of people just like, oh, you know, thanking me. You know, I'm just kind of paying it forward, sending the elevator back down, and, you know, these videos are really fun for me to make because it also kind of reinforces my process as well, and sometimes when I'm when I'm going to take a trade, I'm like, you would never, you would say that you, you can't do that if you were making a video. So, I mean, sometimes it keeps me accountable as well, and it's uh, it's really fun to do. 
So this morning on CBLI, um, even though I didn't end up trading it in the morning, I just thought that I would point out and mention uh, my morning plan on it because this can help Longs create a plan. And it's even better because it didn't work and I didn't end up taking the trade. But this can make you kind of understand why I avoided it and why I didn't want it. So basically, CBLI at 10.25 my time, which is 9.25 market time, I said, CBLI, watching the four line. So we're in around here. I'm like, yeah, you know, four bucks. This, this, this area, this area, kind of looking at it. Then we move a little bit higher. It's like, well, you know, I guess I can still look at this one and this one as well. And then we start moving a little bit higher. And it's like, well, what am I supposed to take? 425, that's a little bit too high. Am I supposed to take the $4 line? So then I'm like, okay, 420 to four. We'll see how it kind of goes. Maybe it shoots through 420 and we end up getting a bounce at four. Um, so it was that kind of stuff that I was looking for. So as we move higher, my support lines kind of move up a little bit. But in this, in this case, we end up going super over the pre-market highs, and then we end up just stuffing almost a dollar a share down. And in this type of scenario, this is a stock where it's like, I, I get a lot of questions where it's like, how do I know it's too heavy into a bounce? This is where you know it, you should not be trying to bounce this stock because it's just too difficult and too hard. And I knew that after the stuff move, it's probably an avoid and you should just let it go, let it be, it's all done. Um, you know, just just do that, just let it go. Hey guys, my name is Tosh Bradley. I'm one of the head mentors and monitors at My Investing Club. If you have any questions about getting started in trading, getting started in MIC, MIC in general, text me at 213-458-5997. This is not a robot, it is me directly on the other end of my business line and uh, we'll get you in the club. We also have special promotions going on that I can get to you depending on your trading needs. Hit me up, back to the video. So that's basically what I did. I just, I let it go. Um, it ended up going lower. Um, and for this type of scenario, uh, it just, it just started kind of dying a little bit. And, and I, I said, yeah, I can't long this at, uh, 31 because you just, you just couldn't. It was just impossible to, to, to long this type of stock and this type of action. And especially when all these longs are trapped. So it's going to take a while for us to flush out all those people and, this was a stock that I said, okay, obviously this has turned into more of a short, but that's okay. I'll let James and Tom and Alex and everyone else hit it, and that's fine. I know that this stock is now not a stock that I should be longing, and that's that's okay with me. You know, that is okay. So I think this is a scenario where I do get a lot of questions of people asking me, hey, like, how do, how do I know? And hey, like, how do I know? When is a good time to take a, long, a line? Like how, how red should the candle be? This is a, a scenario when you probably should not be taking a long trade into a big, big stuff move like this because it just, the odds of this bouncing over highs again are like pretty much zero. So you just don't want to take that and just move on and say, okay, well, that plan didn't work. Or if you did take the long at four, either stop out or just sell quickly into this bounce and just make sure you're out of it because, um, when you get a giant dramatic stuff move like that, which I'm going to kind of talk about different kinds of stuff moves today as well, because that's a topic that has been coming up a lot where a lot of people have been saying, well, I avoided it because it's stuffed, but then it ended up squeezing higher. So I just want to kind of talk about that as well today. But this is obviously a very bearish stuff move. This is not something that we like to see. And that is why I just couldn't take it. But as we started grinding higher, at 1054 I've been trying to be a bit more vocal in chat usually I just kind of try well I don't try and keep my ideas to myself but usually I'm just so focused that I just kind of forget and then I'm like oh yeah I caught that move and sometimes you just get into the ticker and you just get into the action that's going on and you start thinking about what you want to see you start thinking about everything else you zone everything out you're just watching that kind of ticker and then you're you're in it. You see what you like, and then it goes higher. So I've been trying to 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 program myself to be like, okay, you can you you know say the action that you're looking for. I've been I, because a lot of people have been like, well, how do I know this stock or that stock? So I'm not giving alerts or anything. I'm just saying, okay, CBLI watching for a reclaim here. It's grinding patience, and that was what was required. And here we got this little stuff move into VWAP. But notice how we start continuing higher. That is something that is more so of a bullish 
stuff move because had if we broke this 375 level or even gotten down to this level, that would have been clearly bearish, clearly something that we don't want to see. And also, it's the first VWAP test, so you always need to be expecting that the first VWAP test is going to reject, but it's what happens next that is really uh, something that I, I care about a lot. So I ended up here with the 381 average, and I just ended up, it says 479, but I kind of sold in pieces. I sold a little bit into the 420 just to take a little bit of risk off, and then I sold a little bit higher, and that was done. That was my trade. Um, and the reason being is because this was obviously an area that was hard to get by, clear resistance level over here, and I knew that we had probably trapped sh some shorts from down here, but I didn't want to. I didn't want to chance it, and I know that this could easily break over uh, uh, 425 and then stuff right back down. It didn't. It continued higher. That's great, but I just wanted to take some off just to be safe, pay myself, and be re really, really patient. Um, we ended up getting this move over uh, this kind of high. Um, I I like to sell over these kinds of highs because I know that. Um, from this point on, longs are longs are really. Uh, I don't know why I did that. From this point on, uh, longs are really starting to get to get greedy, and we've kind of probably squeezed most. This is like the max pain level for shorts. So the odds of us going lower are pretty high. We're pretty overextended now. Um, there's, I mean, we have just gone up pretty much on air. It's not like it was a grind all the way up. This was just one. Uh, this was like you know, a, just a, a shot up, and we probably sh we we probably. Sh stopped everyone out so that was why i just said okay i'm just gonna take it off i'm done i'm, I'm done with it uh you know keep developing and keep getting better and keep trying and there will be a next one around the corner so uh i just thought that i would say that and uh thanks for watching guys and uh, i'll see you guys next week for uh, another video Thank you so much for watching our video. If you want to see more of our videos, please subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking the button here. We do our best to post a new video every single day. If you have any questions about MIC or any general trading questions, please text Tosh using the number here. Also, stay up to date by watching some of our most recent videos right over here.